Hi, Taman. Thanks for coming on the show again. Thank you. Now, this week's bankers' trust was a bit too technical. Can you explain mm -hmm. why banks may face a loss in this quarter after they registered the highest net profits? Yeah, no, what I meant is this last year was a golden year for banking industry, the highest ever net profit by the all the listed banks. Now, this quarter won't be the same because of the treasury loss. And the treasury loss is triggered by the sudden rise. The interest rate cycle has changed. It's going up. Now, our Reserve Bank of India has uh, hiked the rate by 90 basis point uh, in two phases during this quarter. Uh, bond yield has gone up. As you know, the bond yield and the bond prices move in opposite directions. So what happened is this is little technical. Yes, indeed. Under the norm, a bank needs to put in about 18 rupees of, uh, of their, you know, in the so-called NDTL, uh, which is roughly proxy for deposits in bonds. But in reality, it's about 25%, 25%, 25 rupees and all. And there are, there are three baskets in bonds. And one, the major basket is called HTM, held to maturity. If you keep the bonds there, then you don't need to mark to market. Now, what is mark to market? Mark to market simply put is this, the price at which you, you bought the bond, if the prices have fallen, then the gap needs to be provided for. So that hits your balance sheets. So this is exactly what has happened. So they are actually about 21% is HTM. Mm -hmm. um, so which means the rest of it, the rest 4% uh, for the industry, it depends from bank to bank, uh, is subject to M, M to M. And that is the mark to market loss. And that erodes your, your profitability and that can also eat into your capital. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the long and short of it. It was a sudden jerk and uh, banks, some of the banks I know uh, would be in, in difficulty in terms of, in terms of their uh, treasury operations. Question regarding this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. This seems more like a notional loss. So can RBI step in and help banks? Yeah, it is. But it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a globally accepted practice. You can't, you, can't, you can't avoid it. Indeed, RBI can step in. Uh, in the past, what RBI can do, RBI can increase your HTM portfolio. It says, look, now you are you can, you can have more HTM. So RBI need to tell them, look, I'm giving you an, another window. I'm raising the HTM uh, uh, limit. And you are, uh, through this window, you push more bonds into HTM category. So mm -hmm. that's one way of doing it. Other way of doing it is this, look, Yes, indeed, you are making losses, meaning because of the provision, but the provision, you stagger it over a period of time, over the next four to six quarter. In the past, in my column, I mentioned on many occasions, RBI has ha, had done it uh, to, to protect the bank's balance sheet and as well as to ensure, uh, ensure government borrowing because there's a huge government borrowing staring at us, four trillion plus, highest yeah. ever, highest ever. If you ask me, uh, my take is RBI probably may, may not do it because uh, if you look at the Reserve Bank of India latest FSR, which is the bank's health, health check report, which came on the 30th June, it says banks are well capitalized. Even in the worst case scenario, there uh, no banks would, 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 be, would, be, would be required any capital and go down below the regulatory limit, what the, what the regulatory regulation needs. Mm -hmm. And... On top of that, banks, uh, you know, credit offtake is uh, happening. So you are earning more from credit. And also, your net interest margin is going up. So the bank's uh, uh, interest income, uh, to, to some extent, or to a large extent, can compensate for the losses in Treasury. Okay. So RBI may not be, uh, <laughs> you know, may not extend a helping hand uh, which it which it had done on past many occasions. But as rates are expected to rise, won't this loss continue for coming quarters and not just be limited to this one? It depends on bank treasury floor managers, but definitely it would not be as as severe or as high as this as the June quarter because there's a sudden jerk and 90 basis point in one quarter. So oh. as we expect, the rates will indeed rise. And the bond, in, in sync with that, uh, uh, the bond deal will rise and the prices will fall. But that will be gradual. You know? mm -hmm. Here, the banks are uh, sort of caught unawares. So they're much, much better prepared. And the pace of hike also will not be 
uh, will be smooth, I would say. And the Bank of India governor has repeatedly been saying that uh, you know they will not, they will, there will not be disruption in the market. He also spoke about uh, now ill curve is for public good. I would, I would like to believe is public good meaning it, it includes government, it, it includes also the banking industry. And you're talking about managing, I'm taking you a bit off topic now. Uh, yeah. In an interview with Business Standard, the finance minister said that the privatization, that privatization would soon take place. Yeah. Do you think it is viable to go for complete privatization right now or should the government rather dilute a majority stake first? What's the best way around? It's a very complicated question, uh, you know, and very complicated issue rather. Uh, if you remember, finance minister had earlier said by fiscal 2022, we have already done IDBI privatization. Yes. We would do two more banks privatization and one general insurance company would take it to the public. Yes. And for, so nothing has happened so far. IDBI privatization is the mockery of private. It's a joke. Mm -hmm. You know, in 2019, LIC, which was then fully owned by government, picked up 51% stake. Yes. Subsequently, its stake has come down because of the expansion of equity. But does it have the private character? No, it's still subject to CVC. Yeah. You know, it's it still needs to use the Raj Bhasha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it's not it's not a private bank. It's not a private bank. It's a it's a, it's a joke. I mean, mm -hmm. now government saying that we will do that. So privatization is very different from divestment. Yeah. Right. Now, the key to privatization is government bringing down the government stake uh, below 51% in the Bank Nationalization Act. Yes. I understand that it, it, would be, it would be done, but where would it stop? Ideally, government should not hold at best more than 26%. 26% gives you the power under the Companies Act to block any resolution. Beyond that, government should not have any power beyond that. So if government says, okay, I'll bring it down to 49% and this is privatization, this is not privatization. I mean, in a sense, who will take it? And apart from that, there are many clauses. There are many things under the Banking Nationalization um, uh, you know, Act, which, which, which gives the government the absolute power to appoint the, the CEO, the non-executive directors, the, the chairman, so on and so forth. And particularly one segment, Section 8 of Bank Nationalization Power 8, uh, Bank National Act tells the government have the absolute power to direct the banks to do something what is in public good in consultation with Reserve Bank of India. But often it happens, RBI has been bypassed and the finance ministry does it directly. Mm -hmm. So who will be interested in putting in money if these clauses are not removed? So yeah. it's a very government, we are all waiting for the draft um, amendment to the Bank Nationalization Act. And let's see what is there. Unless government promises to keep all this thing, all its power at bay, you know, even the private banks, you see the non-promoters are not allowed to hold more than 26% stake. Yes. So if uh, not all here, you government must bring it down to at least 26% stake. And secondly, uh, it has to cede the power or under various clauses. Which now, what are the other hurdles the government could face with its privatization plan? No, I, I don't think there is any other thing. There is unions are tame now. I mean, uh, that, that the kind of uh, power the union used to hold, they don't have anything. And why, why does the government want to privatize? Because government wants to, wants to close the tap of recapitalization. Since 1994, it's I think four and a half trillion money has gone into to keep the banks alive. Yes. So governments have the first stage is done the consolidation drive to bring the bank, make the banks bigger and stronger, larger in scale, etc. And the second stage is talks about privatization. To start with two, probably it will have more if it succeed. And then it would keep a few banks uh, which will serve the purpose for social good. I guess that's the way to look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think any hurdle, hurdle there at all. Uh, there would be some protest by the trade unionists. Uh, they might go for a strike, so on and so forth, but they will not be able to stall it. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. We'll talk next week. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.
I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success so high. I will achieve. Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.